This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Isomerism we have started last day and uh, we have completed only one part which is structural isomerism and then under stereo isomerism there are two parts. Okay, One is geometrical isomerism, another one is optical isomerism. Now geometrical isomerism is also complete and we have also started optical isomerism. And after finishing this there will be some related problems and then there will be discussion related to theories uh, on coordination complex. So optical isomerism for the type MAA to B2 and MAA to BC. So here B and C both these are monodented ligand and as capital A hyphen A this is written within bracket that means it is symmetrical bidented ligand. Symmetrical because both ends are same and it is written within bracket and these two a joined by hyphen that means it is symmetrical by dented ligand. So when we have compound of this then the cis form of this type of complexes it will exhibit optical isomerism. So here we have taken the example C this is M A A 2 B 2 2 B are present now 2 B they are 90 degree to each other that means it is cis because AA that will always remain in C's, no question of trans. And another possibility is when the 2B, they are 180 degree to each other. Now when it is transformed, this plane, if you consider, if you are cutting the molecule along this plane, 2 half will be equal. So that means it is not optically active, it is optically inactive. But the C's form, if we consider, now it is not having any symmetry element you will not find any plane along which if you are cutting the molecule you will get to half. No, that is not present. So that is why this will be optically active. And here we have taken actual example. The metal is cobalt 3 plus and B is here chlorine and capital AA that is here EN. EN means ethylene diamine. So this is the example of cis. This is the example of trans. So here cis form is only optically active. Now if it is asked how many number of geometrical isomer and optical isomers are there individually then it is uh, clear here because geometrical isomer number is two. One C is second one trans. But when it is optical isomer you have to consider only the C's form. And if it is asked what is the number of stereo isomer then you have to combine these two because under stereo isomer you have both optical as well as geometric fine so after these two types and same is also applicable if you uh, have uh, one b one c instead of uh, two b fine same now here next type that we are going to discuss is m a b3 now as you can see now A and B join together that means it is not symmetrical. It is unsymmetrical by dented ligand. Okay. And when you have this type of formula that is three unsymmetrical by dented ligand attached with the metal. Then what are the possibilities that you will now see? So here one form you can call it C's or FAC but I will prefer the term FAC. Okay. Because uh, C's you can say but better term will be uh, the facial isomer or FAC. And for the other form, which is called either trans or meridional, in short, mark. And see, when it is, we are calling it cis form or the FAC form, then at least uh, two same atoms, they must be cis to each other. But here you can see all the three B, they are cis to each other. All the three A, they are also cis to each other. So from that point of view, it is cis. But why we are calling it FAC? We are calling it FAC, that is facial, because if you join the three similar atoms, and you will find a triangular face, right? Similarly, if you join three A, you will find another triangular face, but that is away from us, behind the screen. Okay, so that is why it is facial isomer. And the second one, why we are calling it trans because at least two same atoms 
must be 180 degree to each other so to be here you can see 180 degree and if you consider these two a that is also 180 degree but why it is meridional now the reason that it is meridional if you are joining all the three same atoms that is 3a or you are joining 3b then the plane that you are getting that is not on the face that is on the that is inside the octahedral uh, geometry so that is why it is meridional and what is facial what is meridional that is already discussed in previous class so i am not going into details uh, about the uh, features of facial and meridional because that is already done okay i am just trying to say here that if you have this type of formula m a b 3 where a b is unsymmetrical bidented ligand then here both cis form as well as trans form both will be optically active because if you are trying if you are thinking that uh, why it is so because if i cut the molecule along this line both have are actually equal but no it is not equal why because see if you look at right hand side here a and b are not joined but if you look at the left hand side these two are joined that means this half and this half both side of the plane are not mirror image so this is not a symmetry plane okay so that is why both forms are optically active now this is the general expression because we are just saying a and b but if you take actual example see so what example here we have taken we have taken the complex chromium gly whole 3 now what is gly gly is glycine is the most simple amino acid that is c o let me write it differently nh2 this is one terminal then ch2 c double bond o oh but here i will write o minus because it will act as donating site so see both ends are not same one end you have nitrogen another end you have o minus and it is binding with the metal like this that means it is bidented unsymmetrical ligand so when you have this type of ligand three that means it is of the form m a b3 now this is the cis form better i will say facial form because if you join three same atoms you will be getting a face on the octahedral geometry but in the second case which is meridional now when you are adding all these three oxygen you are getting again a triangular face but now that is not on the face so that is why it is not facial it is meridional but both forms are optically active optically active optically active okay so in this particular slide you have any doubt please mention i will repeat it once more now some formulas we have taken and we have given particular example under that but uh, formula but there are so many possibilities and it is really not possible to discuss all of them so that is why i have given a table here where you can find some other formulas here are the formulas that you are seeing that is the general formulas some of the formulas already discussed but some are not discussed okay so what you can do you can take the exam uh, take all these formulas you can draw the structures and uh, try to see whether it is matching with the values that are given in this table so the first column there are some general formulas and all these ligands that you are seeing here that is a b c d up to f all are basically monodented ligand okay because when it is bidented we write it in this way a a then within bracket like this now total number of stereoisomer when we are saying that is actually the summation of gi geometrical isomer as well as optical isomer so in the middle column that you are seeing the numbers it is actually the combined number of gi and oi and pair of enantiomer means it is optical e active isomers okay now when it is zero that means whatever number you are seeing here that is only for gi but in some cases you will see that uh, suppose this one it is saying one that means pair of enantiomer one 
that means basically you have two optically active isomer because it is pair so when i am saying one pair means it must be two isomers because they always remain in pair enantiomer or you can say mirror image now when it is one and here we have total number of stereo isomer five that means number of geometrical isomerism it will be you have to subtract this number so when we are saying one pair means it is actually two so five minus two uh, rest of the numbers that will be for the gi similarly if we consider uh, this one that is a a b c d e f where all the six ligands are different okay here 15 enantiomer possible now 15 enantiomer possible means total uh, multiplied by 2 it will be 30 so all these stereo isomers are also present here that means there are actually no gi all the numbers that you are seeing under gi that is actually coming from optical isomer so in this way you can also uh, check the others okay now this table is only for monodentate ligands and the next table that is for bidentate ligands only so that is why you will see it is written like this within bracket but it is not only bidentate ligands some monodentate ligands are also present here if you consider the first formula it is basically this is a symmetrical bidentate ligand this is unsymmetrical bidentate ligand d monodentate e is also monodentate so under this condition total stereo isomer 10 and pair of enantiomer that will be 5 okay And whenever any uh, molecule is given in the question, you have uh, always write the general formula. Suppose any uh, complex is given, cobalt, ammonia, whole 2, then Cl4. Suppose this type of complex is given in the question. It is always, uh, it will be simpler for you. You will be easily able, it will be easier for you to explain the question. If you are writing this in terms of like this, that is M, A, 2, B, 4. Okay. Because what is the charge present or what is the oxidation number of cobalt? It has nothing to do when you are trying to uh, finding, try to find the isomers. Okay. So that is why it is better if you write the gen, convert it to general formula. Because in, if you do so, it will be much simpler. And when you will draw the structures, you don't have to write uh, ammonia again. You just simply, you can write A or B. Fine. So these two tables, one is for monodentate. Another one is for bite it. Now we will see some problems. Select the correct statement for this particular complex. Okay. That means out of our statement, there will be only one correct statement. M, A, B, uh, B, 2, C, D. Now A, B means what? Within bracket written, that means it is symmetrical ligand. Sometimes it may be that in the question it will be uh, written clearly what is A, B, what is small b, c, d. But suppose if it is not written, then by default you have to understand that within bracket written means it is unsymmetrical bidentate ligand and small b, c, d, these are monodentate ligand. So here you have total three types of monodentate ligand, b, c and d. So b to c, d means you are getting four coordination from here and this is bidentate unsymmetrical ligand so two coordination so two here and four here that means it is six coordinate that is often and the statements that are mentioned here all geometrical isomers are optically active so that means you have to first write the geometrical isomers then only you will be able to understand whether it is optically active or not the second statement Okay, so first what we will do, we will write all the 
possible geometrical isomers and then we will try to see any of these geometrical isomers there is optical activity present or not so all these here you can see all these are c's so four c's now for c's it doesn't mean that it will be always with respect to b it may not be so now here the unsymmetrical bidentate ligand a b remember i have already said it several times that whenever you have any bidentate ligand it will always be c's and you will write it in this way with metal this angle it is always 90 degree never trans so a and b it will always be like this so keeping c the left hand side it is same in all the four but what we have to check whether it is c is with respect to b or not in the first one 2b present 90 degree to each other second one 2b present 90 degree to each other third one 2b present 90 degree and the last one 2b present again 90 degree that means all these c's that you are seeing here all are 90 degree with respect to b so we can say c's with respect to b and basically if you consider these other two monodentate ligand c and b these two are also c's to each other see in all cases the angle is 90 degree right so that is all about c's total four c's are there but what about trans so here we have trans how many trans three trans are written but why we are saying trans first of all this portion is intact there is no change because it is bidentate ligand it will always be cis now why we are saying it is trans see the first one suppose it is number 1 number 2 number 3 the first one that 2 b they are 90 degree so it is not trans with respect to b it is trans with respect to cd c and d second one why it is trans now here to be a trans so now you can say it is trans with respect to b and the last one this is also trans with respect to b that means how many trans with respect to b two trans with respect to b and how many c's with respect to b four c's with respect to b so the last statement it is saying three c's two trans but what we actually have found we have found something else we have found there are two trans this is correct but it is not three c's it is actually four c's so this statement false but third statement if you see there are total three trans four c's that means total seven okay so this statement is actually correct and this should be the correct option because we have to choose the correct statement right now what about the first two statement next we will see that all geometrical isomers are optically active but here all geometrical isomers is it so that all are optically active actually it is true that already we have found that option c is correct so when that is in exam is going on you are having this type of question obviously if you are sure that there are seven geometrical isomers you don't have to move to other statement but here as we are discussing uh, properly so we have to see why the first statement it is not correct because if c is correct obviously a and b are not only one statement is correct okay first let's see the second one it has four trans isomer with respect to b okay but only two trans isomer with respect to b it is not four so this is also false and all geometrical isomers are optically active this is also uh, not correct because in some cases you can find that symmetry plane that is present and in some cases you will find that symmetry plane that is not present so just for example if you take this one and if you are cutting the molecule along this plane both half you will find b so there is symmetry plane present and the second trans also if you cut the molecule along this plane both side there is b 
the sigma plane is present. So these two are not optically active. And here it is saying that all geometrical isomers are optically active. So even if you if you are not having so much time to decide how many are actually optically active, that is also not required. It is asking that whether all geometric isomers are optically active or not. So if you are finding at least one isomer which is not optically active, then it is enough to understand that this is false. Okay. Now what we will see what are the all the conclusions that we have obtained here. Now among these uh, seven, only some are highlighted with blue square box, right? Now what it means? So only those isomers are highlighted that are not optically inactive. That means they are optically active. Okay. So these are the conclusions. Total number of GI7. Then all C's are optically active. That means C here all these four C's are optically active. Right. That you can see here. So third statement actually the in this box all the statements that are mentioned that are the main conclusion that you can draw out of three trunks only one trunk is optically active which one number one is optically active but other two trunks optically inactive so two and three optically inactive only one is optically active okay so is there any doubt because this question it is a very elaborate and if you can solve this one question properly it will help you to understand so many things in just one it's i mean to say this one question is enough to understand so many things so if it is clear to you you will be able to answer other questions also so any doubt should i repeat Next question is match list one with list two. So there are two lists. In the left hand side list, we have uh, so there are some for I mean uh, complexes examples are given. And in list two, different types of isomerism, their names are given. That is linkage isomerism, then solvate isomerism, coordination isomerism, optical isomerism. So you have to match these two lists. Okay. Now the first complex that is given here. Two coordination sphere mentioned. Within the first coordination sphere, there is cobalt. In the second, there is chromium. And always the cationic sphere is written first. That is the basic rule. And the anionic sphere is written after. So for whenever you have two coordination sphere, then what type of isomerism we can expect? So here we have cobalt, ammonia six, chromium. CN6. Now here, chromium can go to this position of cobalt and cobalt can come to the position of chromium. That means they can exchange their places. And this type of isomerism, that is known as coordination isomerism. So A is basically matching with 3. So if A is matching with 3, if you are sure about this, if you are confirm about this, now see, look at the options. A matching with 3 that is present only in option A because other options A4, A2, A1. So just this one information is enough to choose the correct option. Okay. So this type of single simple things you have to keep in mind that if you are lacking in time, you don't have to solve the whole question. Okay. So just one part if you are very sure, then you can easily choose the correct option. But we'll also see why the other options uh, are matching. It is mentioned that B is matching with one. Now B, here you have three ammonia ligand and three nitro ligand. Now B is matching with one means in one you have linkage isomerism. Now linkage isomerism is possible only when you have ambidented ligand. If you do not have ambidented ligand, no question of linkage isomerism. So try to see in B whether there is any ambidented ligand or not. Yes, there is. NO2 is ambidented ligand. 
because NO2 can bind with metal in two ways. It can bind with metal like this or it can bind with metal through oxygen. So that is why it can form linkage isomers. So B is matching with one. Then C, CrH2O whole 6 Cl3. So only two options are left, solvate isomerism, optical isomers. Now optical isomerism here not possible because chromium is attached to its six similar ligands, so it is highly symmetrical model. So you will find symmetry element very easily. It is, it can show optical isomerism. So it must be solvate isomerism. And solvate isomerism, this is also known as hydrate isomerism. Because if the solvent is water, you can call it hydrate isomerism. And most of the time it is water. So here we have water. So suppose if some of the water molecules are coming outside and some chlorine are going inside. That means, suppose if I am writing H2O5 Cl. And outside now I will write only two chlorine and one water. So this that uh, I have just written, this will be the solvate isomerism of the complex C. Okay, so here solvate isomerism possible. C is matching with two. And the last one, only one option left, optical isomers. But why it is optical isomer? That we will check. Here chromium is attached to it, two monodentate and two symmetrical bidentate. Because ox means what? Ox is oxalate. So this is oxalate, bidentate as well as symmetry. So here the formula, general formula, if I write, it will be M, A, A, whole two, and Cl is small a. So this is the general form, but it is Cs, that is clearly mentioned. So C is how we will write, A, A, that will always be Cs. So here Cs is basically with respect to A, because A and A, it will always be Cs. Now 2A, as they are 90 degree to each other, and if you are trying to find any symmetry element, basically you will not find it. So whatever plane you cut the molecule, you will never find both half equal. So here symmetry element is not present. So this molecule, it will be optically active. Okay, that means it will show optical isomerism. If you take its mirror image, it will not uh, be uh, that is the mirror image means it will have enantiomeric relationship. So that is why D is matching with 4. So here correct option is option 1. Is it clear? All the 4 isomers, why uh, they are matching with these specific numbers? Is there any doubt? We will go to the next question. The complex that can show optical activity. Here we have uh, two complex which are basically, see, in, if you look at the formula, basically we have two complex, but both C's and transforms are mentioned. So that is why ultimately it is four. So the first type, CrCl2 ox2 3 minus. Now see, this exam, particular example, we have just done in the previous question look at the list one complex d it is c crcl2 ox 2 3 minus and that is here also mentioned that means here the type will be m a a2 a2 okay but it is trans and its cis form is also given in option four now the trans form since we have already seen, it shows optical activity. So basically, last option is cut. But if it is trans, why it is not correct? I mean, why it is not optically active? So I am now drawing the trans form. Why it is trans? Because 2A, they are 180 degree to each other. Now, if you cut the molecule along this plane, both are equal. 
so this is optical inactive this cannot be the correct option okay so this is actually the correct option but what about the other type fe nh3 whole to cn4 now what is the type here type is m a2 b4 now m a2 b4 whether it is trans or cis irrespective of that it is always optically inactive and the reason is you can prove it yourself so first i am drawing this is a transform because a a that means the two ammonia they are trans to each other and symmetry plane is present this is the symmetry plane and if it is cis that is i'm talking about option 3 b b b basically this position b now also if you are cutting the molecule let me change the color so if you are cutting the molecule containing these four atoms this half you will find b this half is also b that means in the cis form also you have symmetry plane in both this form you have symmetry plane so that is why both of them are optically inactive so only the complex that can show optical activity is the last one option four is the correct option okay is that clear Okay, here picture is also given. The first one optically inactive. Here actually uh, proper uh, atoms are written, but I have done the uh, written drawn the picture with A may to B four because that is the, if you follow that that will be. Uh, time saving also and it will look simple you can easily decide whether it will be optically active or not so here ox is mentioned in this way this is nothing but a a and this is small a and in case of uh, a a fee it is m this is a and all these are basically b so only the last one is optically active The one that is not expected to show isomerism. Okay, so it is not asking that not expected to show geometrical isomerism or optical isomerism. It is simply saying that not expected to show any type of isomerism. Okay, so the first complex, just write the type M A4 B2 because here B is water, A is ammonia. Now the second one EM, that means we have symmetrical bidentate ligand. So it will be M capital A capital A whole 3. Then type 3 PT ammonia to CL. So this is M A2 B2 and the last one is also M A2 B2. Okay. So our first step will be we will draw all the uh, general formula. Now, these two are six coordinated, six coordination number, right? MA4, B2, AA3. So it is octahedral. And when it is octahedral, obviously it will show at least geometrical isomerism will be there. Optical isomerism is there or not? That sometimes it is not easily we can understand. We have to draw the structure, then only we can understand. But Geometrical isomerism will always be there if it is this type of formula because whether they are two be 90 degree to each other or 180 degree to each other, depending on that, you will always get cis and trans. And for this type also, uh, meridional facial, this is possible. Okay. Now, what about this one? That is uh, other two because in both cases here you have four coordination. Now, when it is four coordination number, two possibilities are there. Either it is square planar or tetrahedral. So basically, if it is square planar, this trans possible because when it is square plane, 
a may to b2 right so this is that cis form both a 90 degree to each other both b 90 degree to each other and you can also get the trans both in a 180 degree to each other both b 180 degree to each other but what about the tetrahedral because in tetrahedral all the angles are same in square planar, you are getting 90 degree, 180 degree. That is why the question of cis trans arises. But if it is tetrahedral, all the angles are 1090. So we cannot have any uh, isomers. Okay. Now, obviously, one and two are not correct. Among three and four, one of them will be correct. But how to know whether uh, which one will be square planar and which one will be tetrahedral? Fine. Now, to choose that, basically, uh, some more discussion which i will do later that is required but still we will try to see so the first one it will show geometrical isomerism that is c's and trans so this is not correct option now the second one this will show optical isomerism that means here also isomerism possible now number three it will also show geometrical isomerism because it is actually square planar and cis and trans is possible. But why the last one is tetrahedral? The last one is tetrahedral. Here, nickel is having oxidation state 2. And its configuration is under normal condition. That is when nickel is 0, it is 3D8, 4S2 after argon. But when it is 2 plus oxidation state, now the two electrons from S are removed. It is only 3D8. And when it is 3D8, what happens if I die 3D, then 4S, then 4P? How many electrons are there after 2 plus oxidation state? There are a total 8 electrons. Now, 8 electrons we have to place in this way 5, 6, 7, 8. So, see, in D, there is no vacancy. So it will be sp3 hybridization. And when it is sp3 hybridization, it will be tetrahedral. So it will not show any isomers. So that is why this option will be the correct option. Any doubt? Next one. Mixture of X, 0 0.02 mole, and what is X that is also given? Cobalt, 5 ammonia, sulfate, outside the coordination sphere, bromide. Then 0 0.02 mole of another one we have taken was prepared in 2 liter solution. So mixture of these two, basically this, uh, it is not X, I have uh, said wrong actually the mixture of these two compounds that is x okay so suppose if it is i am saying it is a and it is b then x is a plus b and a is 0 0.02 mole of this isomer and b is that is also 0 0.02 mole but now the difference is see it is actually ionic isomerism ionic isomerism what do you know SO4 now outside and Br is inside. That means they are interchanging their position. So these type of these two are related to each other by isomer. And you have taken 0 0.02 mole of both of these and you have prepared a mixture. And the solution volume is 2 liter. So final volume of the mixture X is 2 liter. Now out of these 2 liter, suppose you have taken only 1 liter of X. And you are adding to it a GnO3. Now, a GnO3 you are adding means what? Basically, you are adding a G plus cation. And you are getting Y. Similarly, you have again taken one liter of X. And now, instead of a GnO3, you are adding now BaCl2. Basically, you are adding barium 2 plus I. And you are getting Z. So, it is asking number of moles of Y and Z. Basically, Y and Z are precipitate. Okay? So when you are adding AgNO3, that is Ag plus, Ag plus 
it can interact only with the free ion now from a after ionization the free ion that you are getting is vr minus but when it is b after ionization the free ion we are getting is sulfate right now when you are adding agno3 that is ag plus now ag plus it can react with br and it will form the precipitate agbr because it is not soluble it, it is yellow slightly yellow in color it is insoluble in water so that is why there will be ppt but ag plus when it reacts with sulfate silver sulfate that is not forming any ppt okay similarly when you have added ba2 plus now ba2 plus it can interact with br and it can form babr2 but it is soluble it is not forming any precipitate but when ba is reacting with sulfate now it is making precipitate because barium sulfate is insoluble in water so this is actually why and baso4 is actually z and it is asking the number of moles of y and z now you have taken 0.02 mole in 2 liter solution okay 0.02 mole in 2 liter solution that means in 1 liter solution number of moles is 0.01 half of 0.02 so if the moles of x is 0.01 obviously the moles of y that will also be 0.01 because it is 1 is to 1 from 1 mole of x you will be getting only 1 mole of beer mine for uh, one mole of uh, x also that is uh, this mixture uh, sorry I, I shouldn't say one mole of x basically x is mixture so from one mole of a you will be getting one mole of bromide ion and from one mole of b you will be getting one mole of sulfate so that is why x and y z and y these two will also be 0 0.01 mole because one mole bromide when it will react with ag it will form one mole agbr similarly when it is one mole sulfate it will react with uh, barium 2 plus and it will form one mole bso so that is why both the number uh, of moles of y and z it will be 0 0.01 0 0.01 first option is there any doubt You want me to repeat? The number of stereo isomers possible for this molecule. So this is an integer type of question. It is asking stereo isomer. That means we have to consider both GI as well as OI, optically uh, optical isomers. Now first what we will do? Same thing, you have to write the general formula. Ox means symmetrical bite. One Br, one ammonia, AB. So this is the general formula. We are not interested in charge. It has nothing to do with the isomer. isomer okay. MAA to AB. Now first we will see that uh, coordination number is obviously 6. It is octahedral. Now AA it will always be in C's orientation and position of small a small b like this. So this is trans. In the next one what we are doing now A and B C's okay so geometrical isomerism possible total two now under this condition next what you will see it is now clear that gi is possible c's and trans but what about optical isomer if it is trans then when you are cutting the molecule along this plane two half are same so it has symmetry element present it will not be optically active but in case of C's, you will not find any plane along which if you are cutting, then both half will be equal. 
at a first glance if you are thinking that why not this plane if i am cutting both side there is a but actually it is not see you have to also follow this connection here this aa connected in the in this plane right but if you are th thinking that these two are mirror image no because here this connection is not present this side so that is why cc is not having any symmetry element and it will have its enantiomer so from cc you are getting two so geometrical isomer two but and cc is having its pair so ultimately total number will be three total number of stereo isomers it will be three okay is there any doubt Yeah, actual picture is given that is the ligands all the ligands that are present and oxalate so this is uh, cis ammonia and bromine 90 degree to each other this is cis and the second picture is trans bromine ammonia 180 degree okay and oxalate is this ligand which is uh, for simplicity we write it in this way o o fine so as you are getting another its mirror image so from c you are getting two and here only one so it is ultimately three is it clear So after finishing isomerism and the related problems, next important uh, topic will be theories of coordination compound. So coordination compound, they are completely different from other compounds. So that is why there is a different chapter based on this type of compounds. But theories means uh, how we can explain the formation of this type of complex, why they are so different and why in some cases coordination complex is possible, other cases coordination complex is not possible. So all these you can find in the theories. Now the first theory, which is basically the origin of this coordination complex that we have already seen, which is Warner's theory. So from Warner's theory, basically uh, we first time we have known what is coordination complex. So this is the most uh, first you can say the first theory. So obviously it will have some limitations. And what happens when there are several theories based on a common topic the first theory there will be some limitations and after that theory the second theory that is uh, postulated obviously it will overcome some of the limitations of the previous theory and it will be more advanced compared to the old one now now the second theory there will also be some limitations now the third theory that can overcome the limitations of the second theory and it will be more advanced than the second so in this way more uh, modern concept will come okay so now we'll first start with the oldest theory which is uh, for the coordination compound and that is Warner's theory so alfred Warner considered that the bonding in coordination compounds that is the bonding between metal and ligand it is completely lewis acid lewis based type of interaction so the metal ligand bond that we see like this here ligand is donating ligand towards metal that means here ligand is acting as lewis base lewis base means which has the capacity to donate electron pair and lewis acid is which can accept electron pair so metal is accepting electron pair so that is why metal is the lewis acid and ligand is the lewis base so he proposed that it is completely Lewis acid Lewis based type of interaction. That is, the bonding is interaction between Lewis acid and Lewis base. But this type of approach, it is actually able to explain some of the observed properties of coordination compounds, but not all the properties. That means there are some limitations. 
so what are the limitations it fails to explain magnetic properties of the coordination complex why there are different colors remember in Warner's theory we have seen uh, same uh, formula that is inside the coordination sphere outside the coordination sphere. same uh, every arrangement is same but color is different because of c strands isomers so why this type of color difference is there when we are having c strands isomer and why optical uh, isomerism in some cases also there so all these things cannot be explained by warner's theory then the second limitation fail to explain the reason why all elements don't form coordination so coordination components is basically from d block elements right we do not see it in other cases so this reason why it is so uh, that is also not possible to explain by warner's theory then it fails to explain the directional properties of bonds in the coordination compounds in coordination compounds the bonds that you see it has directional property okay but uh, that is also cannot be explained by this theory and the last point is it is not able to explain the stability of the complex so some complexes are stable some complexes are not stable but why it is so that is also we cannot explain based on Warner's theory okay so obviously to overcome all these limitations some more modern theories are there and what are those after the uh, Warner's theory the next theory is VVT that is valence bond theory so following Warner's theory Linus Pauling proposed this theory and here the assumption that we made you see basically in every theory you will find some assumption okay so in Warner's theory we have made the assumption that it is lewis acid lewis base interaction now when it is a second theory that is vivid here also we have an assumption and what is the assumption here the assumption is the bond formed between the metal and the liquid it is a purely covalent but truly speaking this is not possible or suppose you have any metal ligand bond there may be some ionic character present some covalent character present that is it may be may not be exactly ionic or exactly covalent it may have property in between but it is uh, considering this assumption that it is purely covalent purely covalent means the electrons that are present between them it will be shared between them equally okay now after this vbt the next theory uh, Bethe and Van Vleck they treated the interaction between metal ion and the ligands as electrostatic now see in case of crystal field theory that is cft the assumption is now it is considering the metal ligand bond as completely ionic so ion is in one extreme covalent is another extreme in case of vbt it is considering covalent but in case of cft it is considering it is ionic that means now it is m plus and l minus ionic means what electrostatic interaction so free cation and anion will be there but this assumption is also very extreme okay but here this assumption is present and to overcome the limitations of cft now the next modern theory is lft that is ligand field theory and molecular orbital theory that is mot but these two are uh, very advanced and it is not details are not included in the syllabus but remember if it is asked that how we uh, that is the limitations of cft it can be overcome by which theory then it is this uh, two most uh, modern con theory lft and molecular orbital theory so they have been developed to explain nature of bonding in coordination compounds but in this uh, that is chapter we will basically focus on vvt and after that cft that is crystal field theory okay so is there any doubt So when it is VBT, what are the main assumptions we are making? A central metal ion, it will have a number of empty orbitals. Why it will have number of empty orbitals? Because it will accommodate the electrons that are donated by the ligands. So this is the first assumption. Then the next statement is the number of empty orbitals that must be equal to coordination number of the metal ion. So suppose any particular metal it has coordination number four that means it there must be 
presence of four empty orbitals because it must be equal to the coordination number if it is six that is octahedral there must be six empty orbitals okay now these empty atomic orbitals it may be s it may be p or d of the metal you cannot consider them as pure that is pure s pure p pure d they are not actually taking interacting with ligand these spd uh, individual atomic orbitals they are now hybridized to each other and ultimately they are forming hybrid orbitals so suppose if i am saying i have taken one s orbital and three p orbital that means it will be sp3 hybridization so after hybridization one and three that means total four sp3 you will get like this so now all these are basically sp3 you now cannot say pure s and p orbitals are present but because it is already hybridized there are nothing pure uh, s or p this type of orbitals are present so now you have to four hybridized sp3 orbitals okay and all these orbitals they will have definite directional properties so hybridization is basically the process of mixing of these atomic orbitals and remember these atomic orbitals that we are mixing for example here i have mixing 1s with 3p that is suppose you are mixing um, 3 4s and 4p so these two must be closer uh, in, with respect to energy if there is high amount of energy difference then this type of mixing or hybridization is not possible okay and it will form equal number of new orbitals that is in this case you are getting new four sp3 orbitals all are of equal energy same energy now after its formation now each ligand should have at least one filled orbital containing lone pair of electron and the vacant hybridized orbitals of the central metal ion that is just form suppose 4 sp3 now they will linearly overlap with the filled orbitals of ligand to form coordinate covalent sigma bond so sometimes coordinate bond that is also uh, mentioned as coordinate covalent bond basically both are same so covalent bond is when the two electrons present between two atoms one is given by one atom a another one is given by b but if both the electrons are given by one particular atom and then they are sharing that is actually coordinate bond so in this case b is basically ligand because both the electrons are donated by ligand so ligand is donating electron here suppose four ligands are donating because coordination number is four so all these electrons in blue color that is actually coming from ligand not it is not the ligand electrons of metal okay so each ligand uh, the vacant hybridized orbital central metal and linearly overlap with field orbitals of ligands so that it can form coordinate bond sigma bond in order to accommodate the electron pairs donated by the ligands the central metal ion present in a complex it should provide required number of vacant orbitals so here four ligands are associated with metal ml4 so m must have four vacant orbitals so that it can fulfill the coordination number so that is mentioned in the last slide so we will end here regarding all the slides is there any doubt So we are ending the session here. Thank you for listening.